Hello and welcome to EVE Online with me, Mark from DadX, and as promised, in our Abyss overview video, we are going to run an Abyss site today here in the Bellicose. So let's look at the Bellicose's bonuses. It gets 5% bonus per level of Minmatar cruiser to its light missile, heavy missile and heavy assault missile rate of fire. It also gets bonuses on the target painter effectiveness and heavy missile and heavy assault missile explosion velocity, which is basically application of the damage. So those two together basically make the bellicose quite good at hitting small things with big missiles to uh, put it in uh, a very basic way. I've got no implants in today. I showed you in the last video how to switch to an empty pod. I've got Minmatar Cruiser level four. My missile skills are getting there. They're pretty good. I can use Tech 2 light missiles, but I'm not going to for these videos. These are going to be very basic fits. The extra percentages I'm getting from the skills you will see in the videos of me running the sites aren't making much difference. And my drone skills, again, that they're alpha capped, so they're nothing spectacular. I can use Tech 2 drones, but again, I'm not going to for the purposes of these demonstrations of how to get started in the Abyss. Anyway, let's have a look at the fit, shall we? And I've gone for the cheapest fit I've ever taken into the Abyss. That is a little bit of an underestimate. It's probably about 15 million. But anyway, here we go. I've got very basic Limos rapid light missile launchers. I've got the restrained micro warp drive on the bellicose. That decreases the signature radius bloom we get from running it. But um, the way it works on the bellicose is that putting in the enduring micro warp drive doesn't actually help because although it uses less capacitor to cycle, it has a bigger penalty to capacitor capacity. So it balances out on this ship in terms of capacitor runtime. I've got two large shield extender ones. I've got multi-spectrum shield hardener one that increases all of our resistances by 20% when it's running. We have a compact lead acid cap battery fitted in the mid slot here. Now this not only increases the capacitor's capacity by 550 gigajoules, which is quite a big chunk. It's almost a third increase. It also decreases your susceptibility to being muted by 22%, which is quite a handy thing to have. Certainly on the higher level abysses, tier one, you don't really find any muting, but it's always handy to know that that is protecting you from that too. Down in the bottom, we've got three ballistic control system ones, which increase the rate of fire and damage of the missile launchers. We've got the good old damage control one, which increases the resistances for everything. For this run, the only rig that I've installed is the EM shield hardener. Basically gives us a 30% shield resistance on the EM front. Just to fill that hole, we are going to be taking all kinds of damage on these sites, regardless of the site-specific resistance modifiers. So just bear that in mind. Now the Bellicose can fly a flight of five drones. It can actually hold eight, so you've got some spares. I've got Warriors just to tech one version today because they're doing explosive damage. We're going to a Gamma site and that's the best damage to deal. Similar vein, I've got Nova missiles. Now the regular Nova missiles, they're okay and they're cheap as chips, but I'm actually going to run these sites with the Kaldari Navy missiles. They obviously cost a lot more per missile, but you're not using huge amounts on these sites. I think it's probably less than 300. I've got a thousand on me now. We'll check at the end of the site how many we've got left. So don't think it's one of those sites where you're going to be chucking out thousands of missiles and spending millions on it if you're using Navy. You're killing stuff quicker. It's a little bit more DPS. It's better application and uh, time is a ticking. It's, and some of these rats, you want to kill them quick. So we've got 32 kilometer range on the light missiles. That gives us just over 200 DPS. Now 50 of the DPS is coming from the drones. So the drones are the equivalent of a fifth missile launcher and a bit. So it kind of balances out DPS wise the same as a caracal, I guess. Anyway, so we're gonna have the Navy ammo loaded in, preloaded, remember that. Rapid lights, you've got the horrible long reload, but you get used to it and I prefer them. You kill things quicker so they can't hurt you. Now we're going in on the gamma site, so we've got reduced explosive resistances and 50% extra shield. So that's kind of working in our favor, isn't it? So uh, the resistances to explosive is our best resistance anyway, inherently on a shield tank ship. So this is definitely gonna be the easiest one going according to the mathematics for us to run. So off we go. The cheapest ship I put into the Abyss. Let's see how we get on. So off we go. The first thing we're going to need to do is warp out to a bookmark. We need to be away from anything to uh, use our filament. 
In case you've never set up a bookmark before, because you don't need to for a lot of PvE, Control b opens the bookmark box. You warp off to pretty much anywhere. You press enter and your bookmarks drop. And then you just walk back to it as I have now. So a little bit of admin before we go in. I'm going to drag the drones out into space. It's only going to launch the five that I can fly at once. I'm just going to group those into a little team just so I can keep track in the site. A little bit easier on the admin front. And then the final check, of course, is that you've got the right ammo for the site. You've got the right filament for the site. I have gone into the site with, well, kind of, I've got the right ammo and the right tank. And then I popped the wrong filament, if you see what I mean. So it's all worth checking. And once we're ready to go, check you're in the right pod too, if that might be an issue. And now we just pop this filament. 20 minutes on the timer. We've got to be out or we die and we get podded. It's giving us fair and clear warning. And once you press that button, there is no coming back. In we go. And I do think uh, because of the timer, this is what this is a brilliant piece of the game just to jump in and do when you got half hour spare. Right, we're in the first room. We've got a what looks like a drifter battleship over there. Now, what you never want to do is just click approach. As you can see, we're flying straight towards him. He's got a lot of DPS and he can hit us really easily. So we're going to turn on our resistance module. We're going to start burning. I'm going to double click in space. We're going to manually fly in towards this guy. You either need to stay outside 50 kilometers of him or you need to get in close, orbit him and kill him. But you don't ever want to be approaching him. Now I'm going to speed this footage up a little bit. I'm going to put my drones out now. I've just checked that there's nothing going on in the room that's going to affect the drones before I commit. Now certainly when you haven't got tech to missile launchers or weapons, if you've got a battleship in the room, I'm going to recommend that you go and kill the battleship first. And then we'll think about the loot, because that's the part of the room that could take time. In the Caracal, I had a couple of issues of running out of timer. Here you can see, over here, my drones did take a little bit of damage. I dropped them off a little bit early, and they did get caught in that tower effect. But that's okay, they didn't get out of shield, so they're repping up actually. They're nice and close into the battleship. They're not taking any damage, we're not. I'm trying to set an orbit now, and again, you'll see we take a bit of damage at those points where you slow down and do these maneuvers. Here, I'm going to hit the scenery. It's summit. I'm demonstrating all this, obviously, just so you know how to avoid it. <laughs> I'm hitting the scenery, which is another hazard in the abyss. You need to keep an eye on where your ship's going. Sometimes the, uh, the loot box is on the wrong side of a rock. With these rats and their high DPS, the last thing you want to do is lose your speed. If they can get a couple of nice alpha strikes on you, you'll die very quickly. Take quite a pounding. And we're still in the first room. We're doing very well on the timer. This guy's dying nicely. He's not touching us. We're good. We've run out of missiles. We'll just leave the drones munching. As I said, I'm not worried here. He's not going to get any damage on us. Look, he's missing us. He's getting a few hits here and there. But it's something we can control. We're going to close in even closer. Pulse the micro warp drive now and again just to keep the speed up. And there you go. He seems to be missing us regularly now there. Beautiful. So we, our reload is nearly done. And he's dead. Very quickly look at him. And the effects and the stuff in this site is a very nice one. You may well have seen a drifter battleship before but wait until we see the next ones. He's going down. Once he dies, the gate will open. And now we can think about getting the loot. So we've got the bioadaptive cache, which is quite close to the gate and always is. In theory, it has the best loot in the room. So if nothing else, you want to kill the rats, get that loot box and get out the gate. And that's what you do if you're tight on time. The other boxes, the extraction subnode, as we have in this room, or just the extraction node, as we'll see later on, on another site or in another room, and I'm sending the drones over to get the box. You need to lock it up and destroy it. And drones are easier, certainly with a rapid light missile launcher. Every missile in the chamber is valuable. But this particular loot box is empty. That can happen. We were right up against the edge of the map. That was that grid we could see. It can catch you out. It's not going to be insta-death for your ship. It will munch your drones pretty hard, but you do want to be cautious. And quite often the loot boxes, or the, indeed the rats, will be sat quite close to that boundary. So do watch where your orbits and approaches are taking you. 
So now we're just going to speed back in for the bioadaptive cache, get the drones to beat him up, get the loot from there, and on to the next room. And this gives just plenty of time to recharge the cap, reload the missile launchers, etc., etc., and for, of course for the shield to recharge. So we got a blueprint out of that one. We'll have a look at that a bit later. That could be some good money. And we got a skill book, which I think is worth about two million around Heckway. So, uh, and we had a pretty easy time in that room. You can see we've got lots of room for error and maneuver. So we're just going to get up to the gate, jump through, see what the next room has to offer us. Lovely little animation for the jump. We're in. Right, what we got here? We've got some mad little drones. Oh, these are... These are not a big deal. They're going to come after us. They basically have names based on what they do. So the Spark Needle is going to be doing uh, EM damage to us. The Spotlighter is going to be trying to target paint us when he gets in range. These aren't going to be a big deal. We're going to head to the, one of the extraction nodes. We're going to burn and put on the resistance module. Look how ugly these things are. If there's no other reason to come to the Abyss, it is to kill things this ugly. If it had a squelchy noise to go with it, they'd probably really trouble me. But anyway, we're just headed off. We're also in the effect cloud. I don't think I highlight it during the gameplay, but that would be messing with a shield um, repairer amount and cycle time, but that's not a, an issue for us. So between the missiles and the drones, and the drones are taking no aggro either, we're going to kill these guys. There's one Damovic in there. They can be quite damaging if there's a few of them getting close to you, but this particular spawn... It's not going to be a great issue for us at all. I must have annoyed the loot fairy because we've got another empty extraction node there. So we're just going to plot a course to the next one. Oh my, they're hideous. Who thinks of these things? It's worth looking at the rats and stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the ships as we find them. Some of the crews and stuff are creepy. They look like beetles with little wiggly legs and stuff. But it's worth a good look around. And... Uh, Certainly on these tier 1 sites you should be able, even as I'm showing you in quite a simple cruiser and with quite low skills, to be able to clear these sites and have time to do a little bit of sightseeing before you need to jump the gate. But of course, <laughs> don't prioritise that. So now we've settled in. I've sped the footage up a little bit now guys, just so we can crack on. You don't need to see this as a blow by blow, I'm quite sure of that. The striking Dramovic we're hitting now just killed him. He's just a generic damage dealing type. This strike needle drone here, ugly little bugger, he's giving us kinetic damage. So um, I'll put up a list at some stage. I've also put a thing in the Discord, a resource listing all the different rats that you can find on these sites. If you want to look in the Discord, there's a link in the description. We've got some Triglavian survey databases from that one there. Just a cash value, you can sell them at a Concord station for full value. Or get about 90% usually in or around your local trade hub. Anyway, this room is clear. We'll let things charge up a bit, we'll make sure we're reloaded, we'll make sure we got the drones and we'll head into the next room. Okay, so here we go, third and final room, so we're going to head to the extraction node, we're going to start burning and put on the resistance module. We've got two Dramovics and two drones in this room, so again, nothing that's going to cause us any problems, no effects, towers that are going to mess with the drones. So this is actually quite a nice easy spawn, this site hasn't been too hard going. The battleship, bear in mind though, without the shield bonus that we're getting from this site, would have had us down to about 35% shield. Now obviously an option is, I'm deliberately running this in the cheapest fit I could do it in. I wanted to try it in, in a cruiser. And uh, you could put in better shield extenders, you could put in some rigs for more shield, give yourself a little bit more room. Certainly when we look at some of the other sites, particularly the firestorm site which will give a bonus to all the rats with an armor tank we might want to up our shield to do that site a bit more safely but that's for you to do certainly in the next video i'll be looking at modifying the fit making it much more useful once you get to tech 2 missiles then you will absolutely breeze through these tier 1 sites unless you get a really really unlucky spawn and then we can also start looking at tier 2 abyss sites which we will be doing there's one of our drones, plucky little chaps. We managed to keep them all alive on this site. That one is very battered, look, bless him, but he's fine, we can fix him. And that's the site done. All we've got to do is get a bit more loot at the bioadaptive cache on the way out. 
we've got a, another filament for the next site we've got some more survey plates we'll have a look at the loot once we're safely out we've got plenty of time left on the timer in this site all we've got to do is head out to the gate the origin conduit and we're back in normal space and we're safe and sound remember on higher tier abyssal sites you come out suspect but that's not an issue for us so we won't dwell on that for now I checked did some maps we've used about 260 missiles on that site now I'm not saying only take that few with you um, but you, as I said earlier you don't need to be carrying thousands into a site with you okay we're coming back out into k-space now you'll notice we've got an icon in the middle of the screen now we can't tether for a minute when you first come out of the abyss We've got this lovely blueprint here for the heavy entopic disintegrator compact version. They seem to be worth a fortune. And by looking at what you need to actually make them, if I click on the right tab, that's what you get if you scrapped one. That's not what I want. Then don't look like they're incredibly expensive to make. So there could be some good money to be made there, but I do need to double check those maps. The skill book we've got there is worth, probably worth a couple of million. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to cost us 57 million to build one of these things. And I don't know if 57 million is a realistic sale price, but we are over near heck. The market is a little bit wonky out here in the boonies. But we've probably got about 3, 4 million off that run, which isn't bad. It's, you know, a third, maybe a quarter of the price of the ship we're running it in. And of course, this could easily be the ship you're running your level 2 missions in, because this is the one that I ran level 2 missions in brought straight over here and thrown into here with just a cap battery instead of a target painter anyway guys that's it for now we'll be back running another one a bit more challenging soon so leave us a like if you've enjoyed it found it interesting or hopefully a little bit of both any comments or suggestions are always welcome what fits have you been using for level one abyss and subscribe if you want to stay in touch and click the notification bell to get an alert when we put a new video out but for now remember even is believing Take care of yourselves and each other, fly brave and goodbye.